Hello, I'm Colin Lee. I'm sitting on what I've known it to be called Lookout Hill, where the army used to have used it as a lookout during the war years, alongside the com community. On my left, which is now being bulldozed by Macquarie and Brown Earth Moving Contractors, which is still being done there today. And across the creek is the reserve where I lived for 22 years and where my house was demolished. And that's about half a K this side of the reserve where I live. This uh, Yaru Law Ground. It's, you can actually see the boab trees from here. And on the left of it, there's another big outcrop of trees. It's, we know, it's known as Cunnan, where the old people lived on that island where the Lirigun soaks are, the water holes. And on the left of it, they'd cut a footpath through the mangroves to cross the creek at low tide. So you can actually see it's low water now then into Chinatown. The other reserve is in the One Mile community, which was also demolished. It's where Matthew Gilbert had done a statement for our family before uh, JP in 1995. He was li actually living there with his wife Susie before he moved into Holmes West House in Nightingale Street in, in the town area till he passed away. And up here on Kennedy Hill is the community hill, a com community that lived on Kennedy Hill. When I grew up, this area was known as Indian Territory. So it is a lot of the old people, when they moved in from from Cunnan, all stayed up on this hill in little shacks. Kennedy Hill was one of our main recreational areas for us kids before the motel and whatever was built in this area. There's be a lot of trees around here, which we used to walk around with Shanghai's weekends shooting birds and walking down to the creek for cockles and whatever, crabs. I actually got photos which was taken by St. Mary's School in 1956 of all the kids that actually lived on this reserve with the elders. They were all Yarrow people in those days. Now it's being demolished with the authorization of with the contractors of Macquarie Brown Earth Moving Company. Over here on my left, that's where the community community was houses were amongst these trees. All those houses in and around this area have been bulldozed. You can see a lot of the area has been cleared where the house has stood. Then over on your right there, there's, you might be able to see some machinery there doing the new lookout for the Shire on part of, the, part of this hill further down by road line contractors. A lot of this area with the bulldo <laughs> bulldozing was, we as Yarrow members had, no see, no, had, not, see, had not seen any notification on what, what they were going to do. They just went ahead and done all this thing without us members even knowing. So that's what's happening in this area. Right, in this 
area where the old people lived, where they had their shacks. In the 50s, there was a two-story house of near where road line is now putting the, the lookout for the Shire to overlook the bay for the tourists of this town. When I grew up, my, my mom's sister, Elsie Lee, and the children actually lived in this house for a number of years. Then me and my young sister used to come from mom's house and where we live near the airport where Broom Toyota is situated today. Come up here for weekends and play with all the kids who lived in this area. Then after a number of years, she actually moved out and went to our grandparents' house near the airport and lived there. Then the next family that moved into this house So, I was about nine years old when the cyclone had hit Broome in 1957. Next morning when we got up after the cyclone had passed in 1957, we heard that two people had been killed up here on Kennedy Hill. They went, they went to shelter under part of the house which was actually built on big concrete stilts on the bottom end of the sand hill, which you can actually walk under the house. So when the cyclone was on top of broom, we were under the house when the house fell on the, them and they, they got killed. That was in 1957 cyclone. So I thought, in my way of thinking, it. But as you can see, this house has been de demolished. Earth moving gear is still moving around and they're cleaning up. So no respect at all for this area. Over here in front of us, there's an outcrop of rocks. That's called Buccaneers Rock, which had a a, a light beacon on top of it for the boats in and out of the creek in those days to make them aware. The story's been told this is where William Dampier had hit that rock and damaged his boat and that's when he met the Yarrow tribe of, of the Broome area. Good morning, my name is Colin Lee. I'm sitting at my place in 15 Yanban Street, Table Beach. I am a distant descendant of the Lurgan clan of, of Yaru people. My mother is Rose Lee. I was born in 1948. My great grandparents were Harry Mingbal and Maggie Kangaroo of the Lirigun clan. And my full blood relation was Matthew Gilbert, the last law boss of the Yarrow in which I've got a document here before me that was signed before a JP in 1995 when he was living on the One Mile Reserve. He states that he's a full relative of us, of, us, of the Lee, Taylor and Joyce Lee Fong families. And he states in this document how we are related. This document states that Matthew Gilbert, also called Muddy, that he's a relative to us, 
um, to the Rose Lee, Taylor and Joyce Lee Fong families, that, in which we are di direct descendants of Yaru. His mother, Kitty Yungla, was the daughter of John Jugan Two Fingers. And he also states, my grandmother Kitty Minwell was a full, full sister to his grandfather John Jugan Two Fingers. But we are of the Lirigun clan, which covers the town area of Broome and towards Crab Creek area. Also Cunnan, another part of our main area where the old people used to live on an island of black sand amongst the, the mangroves where there's three Lirigun soaks situated there that they were using for water. The other two main soaks were in Chinatown itself, which was called Guyugun, which was situated beside, behind the sun pictures in Chinatown, where the real estate office is today. And the other water hole was Burgugun, behind street and shop area. These water holes were, sh were shade sh where shared by the Lirigun clan, which is our family, and the Minyo clan that went, the tr tribal area was from Chinatown to um, Gantium Point Lighthouse. The old people lived on the isle, uh, island called Cunnan. When I was uh, growing up as a boy, We did spend a lot of time in and out of that area where the old people lived. In those days, they had a lot of nanny goats. They had their own garden, fresh water. And when they wanted to come into town, they had cut a footpath from Cunnan to Dampier Creek and cross the creek into Chinatown at low water. This is how they survived. On this map, it shows the whole area of, of Cunnan and the actual lower ground, the footpath back to Dampier Creek. And the reserve where I had my house built. It, it was reserve 30906, an Aboriginal reserve. Now it's Bacon Crown Land, Lot 79. We were granted this reserve in, in 1979 by the Aboriginal, Re Aboriginal Lands Trust. Then they knocked that motion on the head because of a lot of interference from white do-gooders. So we had to apply for the reserve a second time, in which we had joined an Aboriginal corporation called Yadagara Corporation, which is this document here. This is the corporation we signed and joined up with the Edgar family and applied for the reserve the second time, which was granted to us in 1980. We had, over this time, we had several meetings with, with a lot of the elders of the, law bosses of different communities here in the room. The meetings were held at the courthouse 
rounds because it was neutral. So the second time around, it was granted to us under the name of Yadagara Corporation. And this is the document here in 1979-1980 with all the members of the Yadagara Corporation on the top and all the law bosses in the bottom that were, came from different communities to decide, at that time, decide who were the rightful owners of this area in which was our family with the, with the Edgar family. At that time, I'd built my house on this reserve in 1980. I actually lived on it for 22 years and till they demolished it in 2002. It was very heartbreaking to see, see my house, house knocked down and my three or four kids that actually lived in it. I have got some photos of one of my sons standing in front of the house in which, which we lived, which they grew up in. And I'm now living back here in town paying rent after spending all that, that money building this place for myself and my kids at somewhere of their own, to, somewhere to live, which is in our, our heritage area. So what happened was next we, we went to the native title they had a um, court case, federal court case in Broome that Yaru wanted to form, um, fight for native title for this area. And my house was the main subject of this native title at that time. So they they made an overall claim for Yaru, which, which all the uh, clans came under one umbrella of Yaru. So, when we went to court, they kept saying that I was living on the, on the, on the, the law ground, which, which was not true. This is uh, so-called people that were so what happened next was which in, in which I didn't know about it um, what I was told by the likes of were the ones who had auth authorized the demolition of my house. In 2002, after the court case, um, in which I didn't know about it, I wasn't contacted. Then what happened was they'd organized, they had two machine, machine, big heavy machinery out there demolishing my place, in which after knocking the house down, they'd organized for a concrete room to come come out there from town, which nobody knew about. It was all hush hush, and the uh, company that was used was Macquarie, Macquarie and Brown, the people who are destroying the reserve on Kennedy Hill at this moment. They're the ones who destroyed my place. 
So what had happened after demolishing my house, this machinery had cut a road a hundred meters from where my house stood through the back way to the site of where an old Yaru shed was situated that has ceremonial boards. So I didn't know all this happened till about two years after what happened to me out there. So as my niece's husband was working with Macquarie and Brown and he kept it quiet for about two years that he was in, involved in this crew that demolished my house. So when he did tell me, he said, oh, I was in that crew and there's a concrete room in that situated on that block near, the, near an old shed. So in the mean, I couldn't believe what happened. He said they dug a, it came out on a truck, they dug a big hole, half of the concrete room was put in this hole. It, it's that heavy that it took two, the es big excavator and the loader to lift it off the truck and place it in this hole. So half of it's buried in the ground, and the other half is, is sticking upright. And so when he told me all this, I'd raced out there to have a look. So sure enough, there was a concrete room on that reserve. Um, I got the shock of my life to see this thing there. It's really enforced with a lot of concrete and on the doorway it's a big steel door with a big padlock on it and looked like this padlock came from Queen Elizabeth in London from one of her castles. That's how big this padlock is on it and it's still there today. So we all about that concrete room and he, he told me that the, him and these other, other two males had put some artifacts that belonged to the Nyingana Mangala tribe in this room. But nobody doesn't know can answer these questions except Senator Patrick Dodson at this moment. The other two have passed away. I then approached Bob Eagle, which was a private lawyer, to help me to see if I could get, could help me get compensation. So he wrote to different um, senators in Canberra and Perth. And it, each letter came back that I had to see, sort that problem out. So we'd asked for 100,000 redress money for compensation, in which I was knocked back. They said the matter was closed, and that was it. So in the meantime, there was a road, road this land at Fisherman's Bend, Cunnan, this reserve, is not vested in, in Yaru. State Land Services in Perth holds the, the lease on this land. So I got in contact with State, state Land Services. Here's the letter here saying that Tannen Corporation was still active and they're the only ones who could get this lease if okay that in the meantime I'd found out that Patrick Dodson had formed Cunnan Corporation with his name as chairperson and a lot of, lot of the 
locals were on this list who didn't even know their names were on this corporation. Patrick Dodson's name was the chairperson, his secretary. And um, organization. A lot of people didn't know this corporation was formed. So I contacted applying for this freehold lease on this on this um, area, which is now lot 79, when I'm a descendant of this area. I've been bulldozed out of my place. Now you, you and Patrick Dodson, applying for the lease and the Cunnan Corporation. So that was years ago, so everything has come to a standstill. So that's, that's where we are today. Right, the whole, whole fight of this area when we applied for it was saying I was actually living on the law ground, which I wasn't. The law ground is situated where the two Boab trees are, which was near the, the coastline. So in the meantime, I'd got statements from three elders. These are the statements here from Elsie Edgar, Frank Sebastian before he passed away, and Freddie Edgar saying I was nowhere in the low ground area where I was living at that time. So they still use that against me, demolish my house. And that's what's happened there. The last law that was held in the Cunnan Law Ground was in 1990, which I was then present when five boys got initiated. That's in the Boab trees. I was there. Yes, at that time I was living with Elsie's daughter Evelyn, who had who was initiated as as a law woman in Yarrow, and had done all the cooking for those boys over a period of five to six weeks. So a lot of the Yarrow elders were still living then, so I witnessed that firsthand. So. These, today these elders are being neglected. They haven't shown, from what I've seen, has looked after these elders. The last two that are living today, Elsie and Freddie, they just been neglected. So all this has happened in this area over the years. On top of that, they, they wasn't contacted. They started a new law ground, not but half a k away from the old one. The old people weren't, con weren't told about it. They were neglected. They just went ahead and formed that. All these wrongdoings. But I like to see the, the only one who can answer all these questions, who was the main instigator, was Patrick Dodson. You have to sort it out with Pat. So Patrick Dodson is the only one who can be answerable to what's happened in this area, to what happened to my family and to the old people. So that's the only person who can answer these questions, what's in that concrete room and all that.